Good morning. I hope everything's well. We're getting closer to the day. So I had to break this practice into at least three sets. Right now it's three sets of PowerPoint slides. It might be four before I'm done. Okay, but um, here's the first one. And so the next one uh, is called 1B. And then you got uh, practice two. And I might have to split that into two. We'll see. Okay. It's interesting if this guy has the coronavirus that they can't let him sit all by himself on the beach and they're making him move around, which is not what you would want to do if you have somebody that's infectious, but that's what's happening. Sometimes it's a little crazy. So here we go. Once again, flip on a slide, scratch out an answer, pause it, scratch out an answer, go to the next slide. I'll walk you through it. So here we have a pedigree, right, which they promised they might give you. They tell you that there's only two alleles here, right? Um, big B, completely dominant to other B. They don't ask you to figure that out, all right? Um, phenotypes in terms of do they have this condition or do they not have this condition, right? Uh, don't tell you what the trait is, but just some kind of condition. Okay, so they number all these, right? And the first thing they ask you doesn't really have anything to do directly with it, but describe the process in eukaryotes that ensures the number of chromosomes will not double from parent to offspring when these two gametes come together. They're asking you about reduction division, right? Describe the process in eukaryotes. Well, I, I don't have an answer key for this one from AP, but they might be just asking for your knowledge that in meiosis, the number of chromosomes reduces by half. Therefore, when you put two gametes together that have formed in meiosis, you're going to have an offspring that have the same number of chromosomes as their parent, not twice as many, right? They might ask you if you know if you want to elaborate how that happens. You're talking about homologous chromosomes separating in meiosis one, and then chromatids separating in meiosis two. And both those events are necessary to get down to that half of the amount of DNA, half of the number of chromosomes in the parent cell ending up in the gamete. Therefore, the same number of chromosomes in the two parents ending up in the offspring. Okay, so now they ask you uh, specific individuals, explain how any one chromosome underlined not the whole bunch of chromosomes, but one chromosome in this lady right here contains DNA that came from her grandparents. One and two are her grandparents. How did she get stuff from her grandparents? Well, her grandparents had her dad, right? So these are the individuals involved. And so what they're asking you is, do you know about crossing over, right? Because Dad got chromosomes from grandpa and grandma here, right? But in the process of getting them from grandpa and grandma, right? He then mixed up grandma and grandpa's chromosomes in that thing called crossing over, which happens here in meiosis one, if you want to be specific in your explanation, which you probably should, right? In meiosis one of person number fives, gamete formation process formation process we call meiosis crossing over happened so they then had a mixture of individuals one and two chromosomes on every chromosome he had crossing over is a very common every time event and that's why his daughter number 16 got a mixture of her grandparents chromosomes next one So now they ask you to use the template, to use the pedigree, right? And use our letters that we told you these genes are represented by, big B and little b, to indicate the genotypes of these guys. Remember um, back in the um, lessons where they said students often mix up what genotype and phenotype is? Um, even if you know what that is, it's not hard sometimes in the process of a test to give them the wrong thing. They want genotypes, so they want letters, right? They don't want, do they have the condition, do they not have the condition? 
right? So now you got to figure out individuals 2, 4, 8, and 18. So they told you that B is completely dominant, big B to little b, right? They didn't tell you whether this was dominant or recessive, but you can figure this out. In fact, that's what they ask you in this next one, so I'll address that here too. You can figure this out by analyzing that, and remember what we said, you always look for, do you have two parents that have the same trait? Well, no two parents have the colored in with the condition trait, but two sets of parents have the same trait in that they don't have the condition. Once you locate those parents, do they have any kids that have the other trait? Well, this set of parents, three and four, has this kid, 14, that has the other trait. That means that this other trait shaded in the condition must be recessive. Why? Because two parents who have a recessive trait, pretend they have the recessive trait, can't have any kids with anything but the recessive trait. So since they had a kid with a different trait, that means they must have the dominant trait. This kid must be recessive and they must be heterozygous, okay? We'll come back to all that stuff. But that's the answer to this one, which we'll come back to in a little bit. Is this condition dominant or recessive? It's recessive. Okay, so now that we've established that it's recessive, the condition, the colored in ones, Individual number two, right? Individual number two has the dominant trait, but it had this kid with the recessive trait, and that means this individual has to be heterozygous, number two. Number four, number four is over here. Just the same kind of logic. Number four had a kid with the recessive trait, but number four is dominant, so number four's genotype must be that. Notice, they didn't ask you to explain any of that like I'm explaining, right? So don't waste time explaining, just indicate their genotypes. That's all you had to do here. Okay, now to number eight. Well, number eight's easy. We've established that that's recessive, so number eight is little b, little b. And number 18, with the same kind of basic logic, but now applied in a different way, number 18 has the dominant trait, has a big b gene. But mom over here, which we just identified, has two little b's, must have given all her kids a little b. So 18 is also heterozygous. Okay, now based on the pedigree, right? Not some kind of general principles, but specifically refer to this pedigree and explain whether the inheritance is sex-linked or autosomal, whether these b genes are on the X chromosome or autosomes, and dominant or recessive. We already described that the condition, the condition is recessive, right? And we referred to already, so I won't repeat it, the um, pedigree, base your explanation on the pedigree, and that is that if three and four who don't have the condition, if they were recessive, all their kids would be recessive, and we don't see all their kids being like them, this kid is the key, to say that the condition is recessive. Okay, so now, whether it's sex-linked or not. Well, the first thing you look at to give you a hint is, um, uh, do a whole lot more males have it than females? And here we don't have that. We have two females have it, two males have it. That kind of suggests that it's not sex-linked, but that doesn't prove it for sure. There are patterns that prove it for sure, and here's where you have to look at moms and sons and dads and daughters. So here's one, for instance. We go back to this set of parents. If mom is recessive and this was sex linked, that means like her genotype, we could symbolize like this. All of her sons would get one of these two X chromosomes as their only gene for this trait. They would have to have a recessive gene, but she's got two sons that have the dominant trait. This pattern right here explains that this must be autosomal. They ask you to explain. And they asked you, base your explanation on the pedigree, so you should refer to these specific individuals, not just in general saying something like, well, a mom with a sex-linked recessive trait has to have all her sons recessive, say mom number eight, and say sons number 18 and 20. Okay? All right. One more here, I think, maybe. 